We all love bass, but it's not easy to control, so today coming up, easy hacks how to actually improve your bass. Is it you or is it me? Hey guys, welcome to the vlog today. Today is one of those extremely shitty days. A week or so ago, I got this letter from the police. I had today to go there to an appointment to be a witness for this incident. But this entire situation behind me escalated with the glass throwing, beating people up, eight ambulances, a lot of police and, and this entire crazy night that I already talked about with you. And let me tell you, it's not like that the police cares about you being a busy DJ and producer, daily vlogger. They just kept me there waiting for the entire day. And of course, I couldn't film there. So yeah, now it's time to head over to the studio, do something productive and try to rescue the day. I gotta say, just entering this room, being here in the studio, and I already feel a lot better because I know I can be creative and work on new music. Today I want to work on a new song, or actually it's an old song, but I want to improve it and it's it's really lacking bass or the bass isn't really working as it should. So today working on that song, showing you how to improve the bass. But before you actually even think about improving the bass in, in your music, you should actually try to improve the bass that you can hear in your studio. So as you know, everything in here is like absorbing material, all of it. it took a long time to build it. Also the entire back wall is absorption just to make sure that the sound is as clear as possible. Basically those speakers output a almost linear frequency response, but then it bounces against the walls back and forth and you have like sine waves. Those are the waves that music consists of. It's also why my artist's name is Sine. And then they hit each other and you have either like two ups of a sine wave hitting each other so you got a lot more bass than there actually is or you got a plus and a negative hitting each other and it's it's kind of canceling each other out so you have a big dip in your bass. So in 99% of the cases where you don't have enough bass or too much bass in your studio or at home in your cinema or wherever it's definitely 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 the room. It's not the speaker of course except you buy speaker Man, they're dusty. Speakers like this for like 12 bucks on Amazon, they won't do anything for you. The bass is just bad. They can't output the music at high quality. But if you have like decent speakers or really good speakers, the speaker isn't usually the problem. And even with those in the right room, you can get more out of them. But yeah, I just own them to have like a bad shitty speaker pair. So whenever I mix my music to be able to compare it on these ones and check if it sounds good, because that's the kind of speaker most people are unfortunately owning and listening to music to. So I as a producer have to make sure that my music also works on these. So if you got eliminated the room, then it's actually like the setup of your speakers. Don't put your speakers against the wall. The closer to a wall, the less accurate the bass will be. And yes, I know my speakers are extremely close to a wall, but that wall is actually also like absorbing material. So the sound on the back where the bass opening is, is going straight into the absorbing material and just never comes back. And a lot of developers know that the room is so important. So for example, if you buy a Sonos speaker, you can kind of tune the speaker to the room. It's not really 100% accurate, but it's better than nothing. And also a lot of developers for bigger studio speakers have microphones or a system to tune them to the room. And if your speakers don't support a system like that, you still have the opportunity to check on the back of your speakers if there are settings to lower or increase the bass or for example in car systems you have like a digital built-in eq that you can tweak to your liking but don't overdo it with the bass you will just you will just destroy your speakers i know this looks crazy dangerous but um the switch on the back of my speaker is broken so i have to use a knife and yes, I know it's a big knife. That's the only knife I have here in the studio. That's the one you use to cut the absorbing material. And, and I just will use the tip of it to hit that switch and, and be able to adjust the bass. Okay, that should do it. It's all set on both speakers. Really important to set it on both speakers the same. If you don't do that, you will get different sound from the speakers. It will just sound really weird and, and you might not even figure out what it actually was. So check those settings on the back of your speakers. 
A lot of people always ask me if they should get a subwoofer for their studio or for a helm. I personally think in the studio it doesn't really help because it's just way too hard to set up a subwoofer properly in my opinion. It can ruin your sound more than it actually helps. And if you set the subwoofer too high, it will just start like resonating with everything that is in your studio and, and you will hear weird noises from your table, your chair or your microphone or whatever else is in your studio. And this at least always distracted me really from producing. So as long as you're not making film music, I would recommend you to just not get the subwoofer. Also trying to find the cutoff frequency where you split the signal to the subwoofer and to the top speakers is hard to adjust properly. So just go for bigger speakers instead of getting a subwoofer. For listening at home, if you like having that, that heavy bass and way too much bass, just just go for it, it's fun. I mean, we, we all love bass. Then there are of course some more hacks that you can apply to improve your bass within your DAW while producing your songs to make your tracks sound better whenever someone is listening to them on other speaker systems. So let's get right into Logic. That's the old song that I'm trying to, to improve, especially the low end. And the first thing I do is low cutting because usually in the low end you have just going on the kick and the bass. Those are like the main two focuses, at least in electronic dance music. And getting those two to work together and separate them, but not too much. Also at the same time to kind of glue them together to sound as like one bass kind of unit is usually the hardest part. And by low cutting, you make sure that just one of them is kind of the, the star of the track of the low end, because you just have a certain amount of, of space in the low end and you have to dedicate it either to the kick or the sub bass. If you try to, to give that space to both, it will be just too much. And that's like the number one mistake I hear in most productions is just too much bass. I know we all love bass, but usually if you produce music on studio speakers, they don't have that much bass. And if you crank it up to match it to other finished productions, you will just end up with having too much bass and it just sounds really bad on other systems. So get rid of the bass. I usually cut my bass lines between 30 and maybe even 55, 60 Hertz to make room for the kick. I usually go for the approach having a bigger kick and a little smaller bass, but you can also do it the other way around. It really depends on your style of music, also on the kick sample, and actually also which notes you're playing. Another small little production hack is if I have a bass line that is playing different notes, which it usually should, because otherwise it's just boring techno, I copy down another track, copy the, the bass line. Then I split the notes into two groups, one with the lower notes, so I delete the higher ones, and I do the opposite in the other MIDI part, deleting the lower notes. So now it's basically just split, and this way I can EQ them differently. So for example, the lower notes Notes, I might cut a little stronger and the higher ones a little less. The producer friend of mine is actually making that for every single note of his bass lines every time whenever he produces a track just to have full control of every single note because you've noticed maybe in your productions when the note of the bass changes also the energy of the bass changes and to keep that steady which might be important for a club track you just have to EQ those notes separately. It's a lot of work, but might actually be the solution to, to one of your bass problems. Another huge problems are presets. I'm not saying it's bad to start with a preset, but you have to tweak it. You just can't use a preset as it is in one of your songs, because those people that make the synthesizers and make the presets, they want them to sound as good as possible on their own, because that's how they sell their presets, if they just sound fat and huge. But for your production, if you have like 30, 40 tracks going on, you don't want that huge sound necessarily, especially not all of those effects that the presets usually have on top of them. For example, this preset has a delay on top and a chorus and it's a 80s bass line. So it's not really necessary. So I'm definitely removing the chorus. I want my bass to be mono mostly, at least like the sub frequencies. And the delay, I will tweak it and remove all of the mid signal of the delay just leave the, the side signal and only above a certain frequency just to make sure everything is clean in the low end. Next up, side chaining. I don't want to explain it again. I've explained it already a couple of times. It's an easy technique. So whenever, okay, now I'm explaining it again. 
Basically, whenever the kick hits bass lower, this way more space for kick and bass, easy. So if we're done with the bass improvements, there are some certain very nerdy plugins like the bass enhancer. You can also use distortion on your bass to make it a bit more fuzzy and better to hear on smaller speakers and all these kind of things. But basically, if you just choose the right bass sound and, and a little bit of EQing and a good kick, you can actually get away with it and you don't have to do too much to it. And really don't forget to not have too much bass in your productions. You might think it's it's not enough and add more bass, but believe me, there is plenty of bass, probably way too much. And if you finish a song that doesn't have enough bass, that's something that is very easily fixable and mastering. They can just like put a notch EQ on top and increase those frequencies. The other way around, if it's too much bass to remove it is way harder. So I usually tend to go for like five to 10% too little bass and then boost it in mastering. So those are basically my easy hacks to improve your bass sound in your room and also in your productions. I actually got one more huge tip, but first of all, I want to work on the song. The bass is fixed, but there are like millions of other places, points and small edits I still have to take care of on the song. It's always like a lot. Making music, way more complicated than you, than you might think if you're just a, a music a listener. Okay, it's it's late. I mean, it says here 8.33, but it's actually 10.22. I don't know why this watch isn't really working. It's just not set right. I don't know how to fix it. Anyways, um, let's get to the, to the last big tip really quick. The last one has to do with this special box. In here is a microphone, a very special one, a measurement microphone. If you're a music producer, if you own a studio, you should definitely get one of these. They're just 80 bucks. You can also use them to record vocals and instruments, but it won't really sound good. They're way too linear. They're meant to measure things and I use it to measure the room. I just put a mic here into the middle to the sweet spot where I'm sitting. I record whatever the speakers are outputting. Test it with a software called Room EQ Wizard. It's for free. Download it, get the mic, test your room. That's the only way to know if it's really accurate. If you want to know more about this, I made an entire video about it. I will link it up at the end. I'm all done with work. Time to head back home. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe. We will see us tomorrow again, hopefully a little earlier because when it's dark, it's, it's hard to vlog because you can't see, you know the deal. So sign out. It's all set. Should be really careful with this.